Hmm. Hello, everyone. Here's a little Copal, wherever you are. Hmm. Yeah, so for everyone popping on, it's me, Sarah, and the Invisibles yet again here in the Gold Room on Salt Spring Island, BC, Canada. And so for anyone that's new to this, this is a place where I create space for for questions for yourself, humanity, or the planet, and just allow the beauty of the transmissions to flow in and out. And how this works is the first question I get dibs on to kind of ease into the space. And I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna set the intention and the container for today. And then if you've got a question, feel free to put it on the thread. Or if you have a private question you don't want your name connected to, you can send me a private message and I'll do my best to, to find that during the transmission. So here we go. Just allowing the sound, if you desire to come into your space or perhaps come into wherever you are right now. And this is a sound, it's just gonna bring us into focus and clarity for this, this gathering today, so. Also, it seems like there's a lot of musicians above me today, so we might have some footsteps and guitar strumming. So for me, the question, I have to think about it, actually. It's been a whirlwind over here. I feel like my question today is connected with dreams. And if there's any insight on anything that I should know about dreams or anyone that's watching. So what do the Invisibles have on the concept of dreams today? So that's gonna be my question. And for anyone popping on, feel free to post your own question if that feels right to you. Okay. Also setting the space too, setting the intention that, hello, Linda. <laughs> so, so for the duration of this call, we're just gonna set the intention that all these transmissions are being received and held within the golden cocoon of light. So we're in a safe space, no matter where you are, and that this is a place to be able to believe it, receive it, leave it, or lend it, okay? So that's the main rules that I have for anyone participating is believe it, receive it, leave it, or lend it. So if it's important for you to really take any of the transmissions that come up and there's gems in it for you and they've got a lot to motivate you, please you know, receive it and believe it. If something doesn't sit with you or it's not really a message for you and you don't wanna take it on, then you can just leave it, okay? And if there's something that gets stirred up in you, hey Donald, if there's something that gets stirred up in you and you feel like it's kind of poking into parts of yourself that need to do a lot of work, so, but you don't feel like you have the bandwidth or the capacity or the support right now to really go into what's being stirred up, then you can lend it. And so lending is the process of almost taking the vibration of the teaching and then offering it to the earth and going, returning to it when you're really ready to have the space to support the transformation that it's requiring of you. What kind of questions do we ask is what Linda says. So the questions, my dear, are for yourself, humanity, or the planet. So that's that's the basic format. format. Um, generally, I don't do questions for other people if there isn't permission involved, um, if that makes sense, to just honor privacy. Hey, Christy. All right. And so my question today is just any insight on dreams, because I know dreams have been really powerful for me recently. And so I'm just going to go into, is there messages connected with our capacity to dream? Maybe some tools for, for using dreams. I don't know. Let's see what they have to say. All right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
So for us, the concept of dreams may be very different than the idea of something that one experiences when they're not fully conscious, okay? Because how we see dreams is they're an aspect of yourself that is always existing in some layer, in some dimension, that there are different qualities of relating and having conversations with the soul that cannot take place fully in the conscious reality while you're awake. So the dream realm is a place for conversing with your soul. But how to learn the language of these conversations is something that can take skill. It can take curiosity, ingenuity, because there is a language. Your dreams are here trying to speak to you. Not all dreams, though, are symbolic or metaphorical. Some dreams are places where you can have direct connection with the spirit realm direct connection with the ancestors and those we call a waking living dream okay so this is when there are messages or messengers that are not capable of reaching your conscious waking body so they go to your dreams to deliver a message and the difference that we share and how you can tell if this is a symbolic metaphorical dream or a waking living dream is very much connected to the sensation that you have when witnessing the message. There's a deeper aliveness, sometimes the actual eyes of those you're looking at have depth, have a personality in them. There are many other ways, but we're going to we're going to keep this answer short. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. So that was just a little bit about dreams. And moving on. And welcome anyone else that just popped on. This is a great place for you to ask your question. I'm going to also check my private messages to see if anyone popped on. And I will respond accordingly. So, who do we? All right. So the next question we have is from Christy. So she says, hey, Sarah, I'm wanting to ask the invisibles. There is something not aligning with me getting my healing career off the ground. Do they have any advice on what is preventing it from flourishing and where they see it going? Thanks. All right. So this is for anyone. This is for Christy specifically, and I'm sure there may be some similarities if anyone else is also in that field of how to bring this healing, your healing profession, how to take it into a place of uh, really being able to offer it more is what I see this work as is, you know, when I think of like, well, coming off the ground, it's also why, well, how am I going to bring what I have to offer and really be able to offer it more? Like, where is that, that piece? at least for myself, that's how I see it. All right, so this is about healing careers and bringing your healing careers, taking it off the ground, taking it into action, and specifically we'll get into you, you, Christy, if there's any blocks in that, and then also into the theme of bringing healing to the world. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 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 the nuts and bolts, right? All those little details, those fine tuning to what you have to offer is part of how you can create a clear connection 
between the core of your offering and the core desire and need for your offering, okay? Because we see these two different areas as two different points. Point A, the essence of what you are offering. Not necessarily just one aspect of your offering, but the essence, okay? This is something that is inherently you. So how do you bring that essence of what is inherently you, what moves through you, and then bring it to where it's needed? And who needs it? Well, in your situation, we see that there is a conundrum, okay, happening. Because there is a desire to be accessible and available. There is the talent and the skills and the resourcefulness in many ways. But we see a fear of what will result in the success of people around you. This might seem a little confusing. Let's see if we can word it. So, so where the conundrum is, is when people are evolving and developing as a result or in tandem with the healing that they're receiving from you. Because as all healers, there is an understanding that you are someone who appears at a point or many points along the journey in someone's life. In some ways, there is a contract between you and every being that you support in your work, right? For any of you healers watching. And that contract is something that starts as a seed within each of you, okay? So what we're seeing is that there, we're seeing actually, specifically to you, Christy, there's three or four, possibly six, but two of them are from many years ago, so not as relevant, beings who have desired to work with you, but when they've reached out in some way, whether it's trying to find you, whether it's trying to catch up on you in some way, they haven't understood how to easily and effortlessly flow into that meeting. Okay, so, so oh. all right, so I'm kind of seeing, like they're showing me that there is something in relation to like almost like a technical standpoint when they get to the nuts and bolts is like, I don't know if it's fine tuning how streamline your online, like if you have a website, like how streamlined that is. But there's this feeling of they're showing me these different individuals that are trying to reach you, but something um, like the, the amount of effort that it takes, even if it doesn't feel like that much effort, but you know, for any of you that are on here and have gone through times of of tr struggle or deep challenge, feel free to say yes. Um, sometimes during those times, it can be hard to reach out to the healer, right? And so what I'm seeing for you and the message I'm kind of getting regarding your work is that you're able, you really can work and attract people who are in extreme challenging times. But those times can also be completely in immobilizing. So how can you be, how can your offering be so delicately easy to be received and to reach those people in those challenging times? And that's something that you might want to get into a little more, like, I don't know, on the tech side or like there's, there's pieces I'm not quite seeing, but I feel like I'm going to stop there. But to, there is something regarding like, how can you even use your online presence or booking or have something that's going to make it really easy for those impulses that come from people? When they have that impulse to ask and reach out how how if there is any like tricky if it gets tricky on the the internet land on the, the congruity on then you can really they can just leave you know it's just if it becomes too much so how streamlined can you make it for those requests all right that's for you my dear <laughs> all right and so moving on hello everyone by the way popping on i'm sure we've got some new people today so for anyone popping on, this is an opportunity for you to ask a question for yourself, humanity, or the planet. And if there's a private question that you have, you can send it to me, private message, if you don't want me to put your name on it. 
otherwise we will go on hello Rosie all right oh hey Tammy welcome to Sarah and the Invisibles and so for anyone else popping on the basic rules that I have is believe it receive it leave it or lend it so really any of those qualities if the transmission comes up it's for you if so that he wants you to chew on it, wants you to do the work, then please do it. If it's not for you, please leave it. You don't need to leave this transmission with anything that isn't pertinent to your life or you don't really need to hold in your bundle of wisdom. And lend it, so if it's something that comes up that you don't have the bandwidth right now to deal with, if it feels like it's important for you to really go there, but you don't feel like you have the support right now in your life to like really up and stir up all that muck from the bottom then you can lend it in the vibrational package to mama earth that teaching that observation that insight and then return to it when you're ready so moving on the next question that we have is from Sun Sun and so Sun Sun says my dear my question is about this house and land I just inherited can you give me any tips about it all right Oh, hello, Amanda, too, popping on. All right, so we're going to start with Miss Sun Sun about this land that they just inherited. That's exciting and huge. All right, here we go. <coughs> <coughs> go to it if you can, okay? Or if you're not able to physically go to it, find a place outside and know that the earth is connected to every place upon her body, right? This planet, this consciousness of the earth beneath you knows that land, is connected to that land and can send messages to it. Because we think that part of you understanding what to do with this land is really healing and clearing the relationship with the land itself as an essence, okay? Not necessarily you know, there's there's so many ways of developing land, of using what's there, of bringing in people to support a vision, of selling it, of all these different. But the one thing we see that's most important for you to do, and that's why we say possibly go there or connect with it energetically through maybe a meditation process of really setting the intention that you are deeply connecting with the essence of the land. So that means the elementals, the beings that exist on the land, the plants on that land, anything that's even been created on that land, okay? <clears throat> and so when you drop into the essence of the land, have a conversation you know, and that can be as clear as actually asking the land if there's any messages that it has for you, if there's anything you need to know before going forward, if there's any desires. And those answers may come to you in ideas, depending on how you receive messages. So just knowing, and you can set the intention too, giving yourself, you know, maybe an hour of sitting and knowing that whatever happens, when any thought patterns you have, any ideas are part of that relationship, a part of that conversation. Maybe it's as simple as you actually having very clear ideas come to you, okay? Because so many people arrive on parcels of land and forget what it means or haven't inherited the wisdom of true authentic stewardship, okay? Stewardship of a place or, um, a point upon the planet that is very unique upon itself. And so part of becoming and being initiated into stewardship is honoring that whatever and where that land is, is so ancient. It's had so many experiences on it. It's had so many stories lived upon it by humans, by plants, by animals. 
And those stories hold a residual imprint. So figuring out what is the purpose of this point on the planet. And that might be a purpose that can only you know, come to you in many years. But the first step we have for you is dropping in to the land as an essence before getting caught up in the mind, okay? Because that's the first step of creating trust between you and any land that's coming into your care, your um, stewardship, okay? Thank you. Hmm. All right. That was a great question, and I hope anyone else, you know, if anyone else has either inherited land or has land, and I'm sure you've had your own processes with with developing that relationship of stewardship. Of stewardship. How do you honor what's already there, what's been there before you, and how do you bring something new to it? Do you bring something new to it? Is that your responsibility? And if not, you know, whose responsibility is? Maybe there are people in your life that that are really keen and ready to hold and support that vision with you. So moving on. All right, so the next question that we have is from Billy. All right, I'll just show you for a moment. Hello, Billy. And hello, anyone else popping on that's new. So any advice on where my relationship is at? Where is it? Let's see. This is for you, Billy Cox. So we understand that there is something that you have been developing within your way of conversing with you and this beloved, this partnership, this relationship at hand. And so we want to focus first on how you communicate, okay? Because how you communicate is a very important foundational stepping stone to where your com your conversations can lead into action, right? And so what we're seeing is that there are certain actions that haven't had the space to even be considered consciously or have a mutual consideration because the con conversation, the way of them even being brought to the table hasn't happened. So we see that there are different things that each of you is assuming the other person is considering. But assumptions are not the way to build a strong foundation. Creating clarity by having deep realizations through being transparent with one another, allowing yourselves to easily create dynamics of honesty. But how can someone be honest truly if there is a fear around what honesty will do, what honesty, what parts of the relationship may be crippled because of the honesty. And so we see that there is a back room that hasn't been addressed. And it's more on your side to be quite clear because on your side, you have gotten to the door at least we see the third or sometime in October, last year, maybe the year before, but most likely last year. We're not sure, oh, they want me to check if, were you even in, like, were you in the relationship last year or just so they can get clarity? Because they're bringing up something about October. So if we can land into, 
that month for you. And if I don't hear a response, that's okay. All right, let's keep going. What we're getting at is that there is a back door in many relationships, right? And that back room, that back door to that back room requires an extreme amount of trust and patience in the process of getting there. And what we see is that there's not enough trust and patience, but that there is enough resilience. So to get to that back door, the homework we have for you, okay? The homework we have for you, Billy, is to take a stand for what you believe in, first and foremost, with reality. What are the core foundations of what you want to see on this planet and in your life? Maybe write a list of three to five for each of those. So what do you want to see on the planet? What do you want to see in your life? And then how does your relationship currently fit into those qualities? We'll stop there because there's so much more that can come from that. But start with that. Thank you. All right, that was for you. <laughs> Wasn't in a relationship last year. This will drive me nuts. Because <laughs> sometimes, so when they're giving, um, okay, so it's new this August. I wonder if, um, I mean, maybe it was this October, but it feels like it was like a year or the year before. And so sometimes with time, when they, when they give me a date, they're showing me when something has anchored in your life or whether it's a belief or something's happened to you that is going to either that is affecting what's ha what's happening right now. So sometimes, you know, we might have had an experience or a situation that happened you know, last October or two Octobers ago that somehow is now sparking something in this relationship dynamic now. So I don't know if that's helpful. I mean, it could possibly be something already happening now that we're in October, but it felt a little bit prior. So moving on. <laughs> so the next question that we have. Hello, everyone, by the way. It's excited to see all the the new beings on here today. I got adventurous and posted it on a new place. Okay. So the next question is from Lisa. Hey, Lisa, my dear. And so I'm just going to pop it on. Hi, I'm new. Can you tell me what I'm supposed to be doing? <laughs> Let's see. All right, so this is for Lisa Hip. No more reruns, okay, honey? Because when we talk about reruns, we talk about stories that have been played and experienced in your life. I mean, maybe we're talking about Netflix too, but reruns we're talking about, there are some stories that you have had. There are some ways that you have explored your desires, explored your business ventures in some ways, or how you want to show up through work or through connections. But there is a few of those that we see 
as not a healthy direction for you to go in. Now, when we talk about reruns in relation to what you should be doing now, if you are in a time or a flux in your life where it feels like there are either no options but too many potentials that you can think of, but how to actually get there, right? Or sometimes you're in places in your life where it's more about how will you get there by maintaining your sense, your sense of wellness. We're seeing some confusion, especially related to your lower abdomen. They're showing me like, I don't know if it's like in your muscle or there's something in your lower abdomen. Um, it feels like it's, they're also connecting it to you with like, I'm seeing this image of like, like doing crunches. So like building, building strength. Um, but that there's like confusion. Also, I guess the lower abdomen for anyone that's aware of like more chakra centers is your, your sensuality. Um, let's get a little more clarity of what, what is, what's this lower abdomen stuff that they see? <coughs> Building strength in your sensuality and surety with how you move pleasure in your life. And when we say pleasure, we're not necessarily just meaning on a physical level, but strengthening your capacity to really evolve your receptors for pleasure in what life brings you. And to learn how to use that sensation of pleasure as your navigational force. You know, some people, <laughs> they're laughing. They're like, some people would say that. That would, you know, follow your pleasure. I don't know. That could be dangerous. <laughs> Oops. Because we're seeing that there's confusion in how to sense what is right for you. Possibly because of some things that happened when you were younger that has confused your sense of right or wrong. Okay. Your sense, and this could be either from a relationship or partnership or a friendship or a, there's something regarding other people that's misled you in understanding right from wrong in your own sense of the world. Okay. Possibly somebody was making decisions for you that were out of alignment with your needs. So to heal and restore this sense of direction and understanding how to move forward or what really feels right, we want you to pull it all down from here, pull down the thoughts and the mental direction that you're trying to steer from and bring it all the way down to your sacral and strengthen. That's why we said crunches. So doing actual physical crunches can be helpful, but using your sensation of pleasure as your barometer. So when you think of a direction, drop into what does your body feel like when you bring that into your mind's, mind's eye? Thank you. All right. So that was for you, Madeir. Oh, you were sick all night? Oh, no. Deconfusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're showing me to like, get like your lower abdomen. All this area, too, is, you know, if it is, if it is, um, acting up. So if you are also experiencing sickness down there, it's because it needs to be strengthened. Okay. So it's, it feels like it's imperative for you to start working with that lower area and becoming strong in it too. So that as you start strengthening it too, you know, sometimes becoming sick is also just a releasing. Like I like to, I like to think of, of sicknesses a lot of the time start from within the depths of our soul and then they purge themselves out. So when they reach the actual physical place, that's them leaving the body. But in order to fully leave, they need to be addressed. And 
And so, you know, this is just an idea I've had and I've worked with many people in healing and I find that that idea works really well. So, so if sicknesses and things start coming up in your lower abdomen, seeing it as it's because you are setting the intention, if you choose to, to really strengthen that center and really use it as your sense and your barometer, okay? And so anything that's in the way, I think my body is cleansing, yeah. Yeah, anything is, that's in the way is releasing itself, okay? So you're on the right track, my dear. Just cleanse away. All right, so moving on. Hello, everyone. That's popping on, by the way. We've got Albina. We've got Sin. We got Cat. Yay. All right, so... The next question, oh, we've got Sandel. Yay, there's a lot of new faces today. It's exciting. I do this actually every every week. So Wednesday is at 2.30 Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to be on tour teaching down the West Coast and Portland and Ashland and uh, Shasta, Berkeley, Santa Cruz. So if any of you guys are along the way, give me a shout out and I'll invite you. All right, so the next question, there's is all right we've got a question from rosie so rosie granados here how's my life going to be in the next year will i meet the love of my life well i hope so let's see what they have to say and so the thing about you know when working with time because you know, a lot of a lot of the work that I do is more connected with how are your actions, how are your choices, how are the foundations of your life built to support you getting to your dreams, right? Because I think time itself is something that, you know, our reality shifts as we grow, is my belief. So so what we can get into when you're talking about, you know, will you meet the love of your life this year is I'm mean, going to probably go into, well, where are you right now? And is there anything that needs to clear or move away so that you could have you can be in direct alignment with that beloved and you know from my own perspective in this this art form of like calling in the beloved and what hello Dorothy all these sweet new faces so calling in the beloved what is that and in my journey with that I've I really dropped into the importance of first and foremost dropping into the feeling like do you believe and know that your beloved is on this planet now okay because sometimes when i bring that up to people and they're like i'm calling in my beloved my twin flame like i am ready and i'm like well do you believe that they exist on the planet and you'd be surprised how many people don't necessarily have that innate belief you know within them and so and so once you get to that belief you're like yeah sure as hell they are here on the planet then you can also start the process if you haven't already with energetically communicating. Sandel believes, yeah, if anyone else believes that your beloved is on the planet, put that on there. We want to just shoot them out and and just, you know, even in this moment, just setting the intention that that all the beings on this planet have the support that they need internally, physically, emotionally, spiritually to to create those those platforms that will launch you into direct connection and and life with the beloveds that we're here to to experience and and grow with. So that was a little bit of a tangent, my dear Rosie. So I just wanted to share that. And so now getting into specifically you. So if there's something that's in your life that is really aligning you up. Oh, hello, Vera. Vero. Hello, Jody. All right, so Medea, here we go, Rosie. Hmm. <laughs> Lisa says somewhere. Well, hopefully it's on planet Earth because I mean that can get tricky. All right, here we go. <coughs> hmm. 
don't sell yourself short, okay? Because what we see is that there are a few areas in your life where subconsciously you're holding yourself back from really being available. And we know this can seem a little confusing because you are taking many steps through opening, through self-help, through opening yourself to the union that you deserve. But in this process of opening yourself and becoming in alignment with the great reflection, the great mirror dance of finding that beloved, you need to realize, are you ready to find the beloved that is truly going to shake your world and help you turn it inside out so that the two of you can stitch it back together, can fuse it into a, more ma a greater masterpiece of what's possible. Because there is something in your life that we see related to your sense of identity in regards to relationships that needs to shift so that you can step into being a pillar beside another pillar, holding the roof with your love and your commitment together, holding that shelter for not just yourselves, but that shelter that more beings can come into your lives. We're seeing the next three to eight months is pivotal to you in figuring out, well, what is that belief that you may have will give you a few hints. Something along the lines, and this is a more of a subconscious pattern. We hear, I cannot survive the Holocaust of reality, okay, without the support from another being. The other belief we hear is there is judgment from those I love dearly in relation to how I will show up to another being, okay? And so what we want you to look at is whatever you've experienced, however your relationships have gone in the past, do not let this determine what you and your relationship with your beloved will be, but notice if there are beliefs that others have had on you, stories that they've told you that you've taken in as your own, and shed those and strip those, but witness those because they're getting in the way of you being available to your right relationship. So within the next three to eight months, strengthening your capacity to really refine and align yourself without the bullshit of the past stories that are stuck on you, especially on your hip and your right elbow. Okay, so those are two physical points that you can work on. Thank you. All right, so that was for Rosie. Hello, everyone popping on. We've got a full house today. This is me, Sarah Burns, and the Invisibles. And so for anyone popping on, this is a place for questions for yourself, humanity, or the planet. And you're welcome to believe it, receive it, leave it, or lend it. So if it's not for you, please leave it. Leave it here in this temple space if it's something that you need to really take with you. If there's a teaching that comes up, I know that all these teachings speak to many of us because we are a collective being. There is a collective story, even though some of them may have specific details. So that was about the divine lovership, bringing in the beloved. And so the next question that we have... There's so many of you, I gotta just scroll for a moment here. All right. Okay, so we've got, we've got Sin here. Hey, sweetie. Nice to see you online. Hello, Ralph, Hello, Emma, all you new folks popping on. So this is from Sin and we say, Hi, Sarah. Greetings, long time. I had spent time without someone you told me was harmless, but was doing nothing for me. So, right. <laughs> oh, 
I'm healing now. What do you see next? Continuing working on myself and my next journey. All right, my dear. Well, welcome to the next journey. <laughs> so this is for you in relationship to your journey, your next path in life. All right, here we go. <laughs> We're also hearing, don't sell yourself short again, starting with you. All right. <laughs> Keeping an eye on the prize is important. However, right now, it's more important for you to diagnose what systems of getting to that prize you have had in the past that are not serving you, okay? We're seeing that there's something in relation to a remedy. So a system that you've used as a backup plan when something that you truly wanted to do or a way that you truly wanted to get to where you're going failed. And so that backup plan you've been using to drive your ship with, which has helped to make it through the turbulence of the last few years, but it needs to shift into the passenger seat, if not back into the driver's manual. Because what is happening for you right now in your life is that there are ways of addressing your needs. There are ways of getting what you want that haven't worked for the past, in the past or for the past, but it is time. It is ripe for them to work now. So this is for any of you that this can relate to as well. Sometimes in life, it may feel that we've had to throw, that you may have to throw away a way of approaching life that you truly believe in, that's truly in integrity with how you want yourself to work with the world, how you want to see the world working with itself, others. But because it's not time for that approach, putting it to the side and then forgetting that it doesn't mean that it's invalid. Okay. There are some approaches that are invalid. There are some ways that are, to be quite frank, bullshit ways of getting to your needs or getting your needs met that are never going to get you to that destination. But for you, Sin, we're seeing that there is a system, especially regarding how you approach men in your life, that it's time for using now because you've cleared a lot of the baggage or a lot of your ancestral baggage from your mother's father's line that was getting in the way of that approach working and of you magnetizing people in your life to work with you and to be in partnership with you that are only going to connect with you if you have that approach, okay? And something that we're seeing is, oh, I'm just gonna describe it. They're, they're kind of showing like this image of like doors closing to past relationships. So. So really, like when we close doors, and this is for anyone watching, too, with the idea of energetic cords or really creating closure with relationships we've been in. And so they're showing this image of like closing a door, you know, not leaving it a crack just in case, you know, you don't think that you, you want them to feel that they can come in without asking. No, you need to learn how to put and not learn. You need to remember how to close doors. And if someone wants to come back in your life, they've got to knock and they've got to reach you properly. Okay. And then you got to get, you got to go through the whole meeting and encounter stage again. Because they're showing me that maybe this is something that's happened in the past of like leaving some doors open between people in your life. And this doesn't even necessarily have to be relationships, like close, intimate relationships, but it can be leaving the, you know, leaving the door crack open for friendships that, you know, maybe, maybe it'll work out again, but 
they really want you to feel into what does it mean? And for anyone else that this might relate to, you know, what does it mean to close the door and, you know, with all the love and compassion in your heart so that if people want to come back in your life, they need to greet you again and you need to go through all of that that again, all of that meeting process. Um, and then you get to make the choice if you want that person back in your life. You know, they don't want you to give, you know, give out these, these, uh, <laughs> they're like almost like get out of class free passes or like, you know, giving out keys to your, to your door just to anyone. So, you know, you close that door, you get your key back. If they were living with you, you get your key back. Okay. And you don't give that one out again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So I hope that's helpful, Madir. So starting with that, starting with with really closing doors in a, in a real, real right way. And how can you go into the relationships in your life and make sure that, that there's some doors that if they haven't been closed and like really close them. All right. Here we go. Ching. All right. So the next question we have. Is from I'm just going to double check that I don't have any private messages. Sometimes people send me private messages if you don't want your name. All right, so we do have a private message first, or that one actually came a little later, so, all right. Let me just make sure I'm here at the right timing. Yes, he was spot on, oh, <laughs> great. Sin says, I'll just show that for a moment. Woohoo! <laughs> all right. So the next question we have and hello and if anyone else is new popping on by the way I can't converse much with my eyes closed so this is from Tammy all right, my dear. So this is for Tammy Ward. I'm going to show this for a moment. Hi, my dear. All right. So Tammy says, will I be in a relationship anytime soon? And if so, maybe a name. Oh. Nice. This is like the moment I said name, I heard like Tyler. No. But more like, is there a Tyler in your life that you need to? I don't know. Sometimes I hear names and it's somebody that you need to either clear or somebody that's coming to you. But, but let's see if what they have to say. And so it seems like this is a theme so far as, you know, each, I find each transmission has a different theme. And so this is the theme of relationships. So, you know, what does that mean to, to have these mirrors in our lives, have these, these unions in these unique ways. And you know, I'm, I'm personally married, so I'm, I'm past the, the honeymoon and into the, the deep commitment time. <laughs> All right. So for you, Tammy, will I be on a relationship anytime soon? And if so, maybe a name. Let's see. And like I mentioned for, you know, with the last one about relationships is that, you know, time is a flexible thing. It really, a lot of it depends on the foundations of how you're building your life. And if you are, you actually are available energetically, if your soul is truly available for these relationships, because when we really make ourselves available and clear whatever blockage is in the way of us actually being able to be seen, then things can happen really quickly. Okay, so let's see. They're saying, I'm hearing, don't get into the trenches with anyone you're not ready to do heavy lifting for. Here, let's move into that. <clears throat> I'll repeat that. Don't get into the trenches without anyone, with anyone you're not ready to do heavy lifting for. All right. And one more time. Let's do it. Don't get into the trenches without anyone you're ready to do heavy lifting for. I like that one. <coughs> Why we bring that up is we see that there is a certain amount of reciprocation 
that is needed from you in this relationship that's coming your way. And we want you to know that, yes, there is going to be times when you're going to need to really hold the brunt end of the weight. And so this doesn't mean that it's not necessarily beneficial. We feel that this relationship is not going to be necessarily the last relationship for you, but it is a stepping stone for you really developing what you need to get where you desire with your relationships. Okay. Because there is something in you and in possibly your ancestral line, same as, you know, where there hasn't been necessarily the same amount of courage or desire to really hold the other person up. Who knows if it's either because of um, societal dynamics or your actual energetic capacity or bandwidth. Because this next person coming in your life is going to teach you just how strong you need to be to be able to be in that divine relationship. It's a training relationship. There will be joy. And there'll be, <laughs> they're like, there'll be moisture. <laughs> but it's here to not get attached to, but to allow to strengthen you and your needs and your desires and who you are, to refine who you are so that you can make it into the next ring. Okay. Yes, and if you are going in the direction you are within the next 12 months, we're also hearing something about April. So there's some dates, but of course, do what you can within that time because, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, they just want me to be clear that, like, if you're ready to do some heavy lifting and, like, also, I know some, <laughs> sometimes when they say something like, this is not the relationship you're looking for, but... The idea that it is going to be rewarding and it is going to get you to your final, you know, your final destination, but being prepared to do that heavy lifting and to really strengthen what it feels like to do the work and just and that you can. Um, so take it, leave it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You'll be waiting. All right. So moving on, just checking on the time. OK, we're good. So the next <laughs> relationship, <laughs> somebody wrote that, I know. Oh, hello, Victoria. Hello, Lori. I've got a, a bunch of relationship ones coming. It's a relationship hour here at Sarah Burns and the Invisibles. So the next um, question we have is from Cornell. Hello, Cornell. I hope you're still on. Thanks, everyone, for being patient for your question to come up. I hope I can get to all of them. All right. So Cornell is saying, I'm going to pop this on. Cornell Smart, what's the meaning of my life? I like that question. All right. Here we go. Are you still on, Cornell? I hope so, because this one is for you. <laughs> I feel like before before answering this question, I'm just going to clear. There's a lot getting stirred up in this space. So I'm just going to give a little little spring cleaning to my, my temple room here. And if anyone that's watching desires that this sound comes into wherever you're living and, or are right now and just cleaning, cleaning and clearing and bringing us into presence so that we can really be receptive to the transmissions and take what is ours to take and receive. So here we go. Bringing us into clarity cleansing any energy that's been brought up through any of these transmissions and so we can move forward.
And now for you, Cornell. <laughs> They also want me to remind people before getting in is that um, I do this every Wednesday. So if you can't make it, then please drop in another Wednesday, okay? And the earlier you come, the, the more likely you'll get your question answered. Okay. <coughs> 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 Cornell, Cornell, we need to do some clearing, okay? We need to go through your diaphragm. We need to deeply breathe into existence. Because we're seeing that your breath has been shallower than it should be. To be able to feel the wholeness of yourself. So when we get into the destination or the meaning of your life, the first thing we see is to deeply breathe into yourself, to being able to fill your life with life force. Because so many things in your life and in many beings' lives, for anyone watching, without having the energy available to partake in what we can be, what's capable of us, and we can be limited to what's possible for us. So for you, Cornell, breathing deeply, and we mean this symbolically and actually quite literally. So getting into breath practices, how can you breathe deeper throughout the day? And then as for meaning, we're seeing, well, <clears throat> they're showing me, <laughs> Somebody must be flushing a toilet. So they're showing me um, this image of like a scroll. So like those old wound up scrolls. And I don't know if it's something to do with writing or or delivering messages or both. So So some way that you're like what you want to share in the planet and connecting that with, with making it available. Let me, let me see if you're still on. I don't even know if you're quite still on. Sometimes it's hard to fully read when people aren't on anymore. But for you, like getting, yeah, getting into deep breathing and getting into how can you take your message and like with the scroll, it represents like also making it tangible, okay? So it's not like seeing a person speak, it's something that like is gonna be written down and shared. Oh, you are here, yay! <laughs> Great. Um, does, that, does that make sense? So we can get into a little more, let's see. They're also saying something about your appendix, your appendix, or, or maybe it's appendix, like in, or, which I think is a writing term. It's either a writing term or your physical appendix. Um, but your power, and, and you know, maybe the squirrel too also represents, you know, something ancient because, so it could be something like wisdom or teachings. So sharing teachings or sharing wisdom or sharing something, like, cause it, it when I see it, it's very old. So sharing, sharing truth, um, I mean, we have so many, we have so many qualities of that, but you know, that could turn into many things. So, so this scroll, whatever the symbolic nature is, could manifest into many areas or directions in your life. But that's like, a, that's a hint for you. So I hope that's helpful. And breathe deep, breathe deep into yourself. Give yourself more energy, more lung capacity, so you can have the energy to, to, to really go forward with your needs. All right, here we go. So the next one we've got. Yep, 
You're welcome. <laughs> All right. And hello, everyone popping on. Super appreciate you and your presence and being part of this. I like to think of this as, you know, all of us now are, are networking and are connecting in this in this great, I call it the golden egg, so that, you know, during these transmissions where whoever comes in is entering into this, this golden egg, this sweet, loving, protective space. And this is a place for questions for yourself, humanity, and the planet. You know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to everyone before I have to pick my daughter up. Um, at the school bus today, but I am going to move along. So moving along, I know we have one private message. I just want to make sure that the timing of it is honoring the line we've got here. And once again, hello, everyone that's popping on and new to this. We're here every Wednesday. We've got Marielle. Cici Hermosa, we've got Jenna Ray, and, and also for anyone popping on, I am honoring the order that they're come on. So yes, I want to read you. Yes, I want to answer all your questions, but I have to, you know, that's why I do this every week, because <laughs> there's so many. All right, so where are we? So I think, all right, so the next question we have is for Miss Cat. All right, so this is for Cat McMorrow. So she says, "Hey Sarah, I'm wondering if the Invisibles think my hubby and I should have another baby." Hello, Lavelle. I'm stepping on. All right. Hmm. So also when, you know, my feeling, I just want to bring this up. So for anyone that this topic is, you know, coming up for, so if anyone is in a place where either they desire to have a child or they've had a child, they want to have another child. You know, I have a six-year-old and I went through a pretty amazing series of conscious conception. And that was like many years actually of preparing my body, of really like calling in and connecting with her soul and and kind of getting a little uber uber ritual with it you know i'm not saying that everyone should do that but it was it was very powerful hello magdalena oh i'm doing great i love all y'all stepping on and so with the process of bringing in souls bringing in these these beings these babies this is for you cat and this is for anyone else it's important to to connect in with you know do you have a contract with another soul like do you have a contract to be a mother to be a father to be a caretaker of a child, of a being on this in this life. Because I believe that these contracts, you know, they can happen before we're born and they can come with us, but simultaneously with any soul contract, hello Melissa and Marielle. So with any soul contract, it is something that can be adjusted. And part of adjusting it is figuring out like, well, you know, maybe it doesn't actually align with where you're at and you want to shift it. So for you, Kat, we're going to get into, do you have a soul contract with another individual? Are you still on, by the way, hun? If you're, And so do you have a soul contract with another child? Do you have a soul contract to bring another human into this planet? And we're going to drop into that. Um, even before I said it, I was like hearing a sister. Um, I don't know like if you had a sister or, but let's let's see what they say. Oh, yes. There you are, sweet. This is for you, hon. Oh my gosh, somebody's calling me. It's actually my husband. Who knows? I should. I'm on right now, so hope it's not too urgent. <clears throat> Hello, Edward. We definitely see some options for you and your family. And there are two, actually, two different beings. 
And so one of them is a young girl, okay? And she wants us to tell you she wants to become a doctor. <laughs> She's also saying, I think it'll be easier if I keep my eyes open since it's like a double, double, double conversation. She's also saying something like she doesn't want to hurt your liver. Um, like she's, yeah, she's nervous of hurting your liver. Um, I mean, also, I mean, liver could also, it could be quite physically like, bringing up liver, liver issues or, but it also could be, you know, energetically the liver is the storehouse for anger um, in Chinese and different, in different cultures, how each organ holds a different emotion. Let's see if there's anything else. There's something about like November 30th. So, which is really soon. Um, Yeah, I feel like she she's kind of wanting to, you to feel like more of the imperativeness, like if maybe by November 30th, you could really connect with her in some way. I don't know if it's because she wants to know she can just she should just move on. Um, she's also saying something about her having loose ties with another life and wants to spare you the grief of her having to deal with in this life. And so there is a little, I'm almost wondering if there's tw if they're twins, ah, not to freak you out, but I'm seeing like, like when I try looking, there's, there's this like little boy um, as well, but He's like kind of hiding, like he seems really shy. Um, oh, this is for you, Veronica. Hey, Veronica. Um, so this is Ask the Invisibles. So it's um, a live channeling Q&A. So we're doing questions for yourself, humanity, and the planet. And this is for a woman cat. So there is another little boy that I'm seeing. And specifically also, Veronica, this is about a... This is about um, spirits of souls, a woman wanting to bring her child in. There's a little boy that's like hiding behind the girl and he feels really shy. Like he feels like they're like he doesn't know if he's wanted or something. But he actually feels quite honestly, he feels more alive. Like he like when I look at him, he feels like he has a deeper connection with your family. And so there is something with like he like you needing to connect with his spirit before making any decisions and really feel like, are, do you want him? You know, do you want to support him in this life? But the feeling I have is that most likely, yes, you should have another child. <laughs> um, but you need to drop into if those those soul contracts feel right or if one of them feels right. All right, my dear. <laughs> so moving on. So the next question we have. There's so many of you. You're welcome, my dear. And so for anyone popping on, if you just popped on, I'm not going to be able to get to you because I need to get pick up my little girl from the bus stop very soon. Hmm, someone just said, please bring her little girl in. She passed. Oh, Marielle, it is okay. So, so for anyone that's new to this, I do this every week. And if you're just popping on, or you know, we have a really full house today, so I haven't been able to get to everyone, and I, I'm pretty sure I will not be able to get to everyone. So, if you pop on next week, then we can we can hopefully come on early. It starts at two thirty, 
specific standards now. Hello, Belinda. There's so many of you. And, and you know, just sending, I guess right now, just sending a prayer before I get into the next question. You know, acknowledging that each of you is coming here with a question, is coming here with something within your being that is desiring support. And so I want to honor that. I want to honor the courage and the patience that it has to, to bring that and bring that to the table and bring that to us, you know, online to somebody you don't even know possibly. Hello, Lavan. And so because I'm not able to get to all of you, you know, your questions today, just setting the intention that if you choose to align with this intention, you know, within the next few weeks, if you, you know, if I'm not the one that's supposed to support you, or if you do want to actually like drop in and we could have a private session, I do that. I do by donation um, half an hour private sessions. But, you know, in the next few weeks, creating space for for the support that you need to come in, for any of the guidance you need to come in, allowing yourself to be open and receptive to the messages as they come, whether it's through the dream world, whether it's through synchronicity, through your child telling you something profound, you know, knowing that that support is all around you if you allow yourself to at least drop into what's currently available. So just knowing and setting that intention that you'll find that that answer, that support in the next couple of weeks. And so the next question we have. Thanks for bearing with me. It takes a, there's so many. All right. So we've got Albina here. Hey, love, are you still on? Because if you are still on, my dear, we have your answer coming your way. So she says, how should I improve my finances? All right. Well, I think this is going to be a good answer for anyone else. She's here. Hey, babe. All right. So... So how, how can you improve your finances? And so, you know, just this setting the intention that this is also going to speak to any of you that might be in a similar situation or, you know, desiring a little more pointers. But this is also specifically to you, my dear. All right. <clears throat> Funny. They're like, they're, I heard someone say, like, go to the bank and tell them you want a mortgage. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, maybe they're trying to get at like being like really just like sure and and assertive and ready to take action with what you want. <laughs> Let's get into more of it though. <laughs> Yes, we want you to take on bigger projects that require more of you. Because there's a lot in the in reality in this universe regarding like attracts like, right? And so when we get to the realm of finances, we get into the realm of understanding how to allow energy to flow in the form of money, which is really just a conduit of opportunities and potential. So when we get to finances, we need to feel into what are the opportunities? What are you calling in and desiring as a result of the money? Because without getting clear on your goal, and we mean really clear, down to the dollar if possible, this is a very powerful practice for you. It's claiming, and for anyone else this might relate to, claiming the amount of money that you require in the next seven months, okay, 
And really organizing what you spend, the details of that, what you need to get your base levels, you know, settled. And then if you were to put on turning, put on the needs of your body and your health, okay, put on the need for socializing, for events and gatherings that bring life to you, because that is also a need, okay? There's also the need for insight and wisdom. That's also a need to learn, to develop your skills so that they themselves can roll into greater offerings. But for you, when we talked about going and just slamming that mortgage papers down, right? Bringing yourself into a place of responsibility and trusting yourself to be responsible with money. Do you trust yourself to be responsible? That is the greater question. Because if there isn't that trust inherently in you, then you're going to keep manifesting situations that maybe you, you feel are doable, are feasible. But to trust in you and your capacity with, to hold and harness money means that if there are greater financial responsibilities that come up or you have a potential, if you can't trust yourself with them, then going into the root of where that distrust is. For some cases, that root of distrust in money is root in distrust of source, okay, or creator or God or the essence that provides the unlimitless, unlimited resources right because if there is a schism there and you feel like you're not able to fully trust in that willingness and openness to have that expansion in your financial realm then it's going to sift itself and ping pong off many areas in your life so how can you trust deeply where are the parts of you that do not trust, what are memories you've had or situations that you need to heal or forgive yourself for. And these can also be familial situations, getting into your core wounds around money, okay, with other people. Oh. So getting into trust with your relationship with money, there's actually, I'm going to plug her here because, I mean, she may not be for everyone, but Jillian Anderson anyone heard of her put a whoop out um permission to prosper i'm gonna write this to you so you guys can see it permission to prosper is a pretty interesting um money priestess that has some some really important qualities and values around around clearing and bringing more money into our lives by also connecting with your 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 sensuality and your sexuality and your and how there's a direct link in the body and its connection with abundance and money and how they you know we can actually bring those two worlds together by working also in our body and with our energy in different areas so she's a fascinating woman to check out if anyone's interested she mainly works with women that's like her 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 core crew but i'm sure anyone can any female identified or people that just want to learn a little bit because there's a lot of um, womb stuff that comes up. So, and for everyone else popping on, actually just wait a moment. Could I, no. Oh, can you get a Lila at the bus so I can answer more questions? Oh, you're all in luck. My husband just came home, so I can answer a few more questions and not have to get my daughter from the bus. Okay. So, hmm. Oh, Margaret Holmes. These are all great questions. She was talking about the baby in the spirit realm. So for anyone that popped on, yeah. Got you, honey. I think you're actually next. All right. So the next question. Is for 
a this is a private message okay so this message so if anyone else if you ever come on on another Wednesday and you don't want to have your your name associated or your picture associated with your question you can send me a private message so this is for a being and it says hi dear friend can you help me with some guidance about my ex Inez she or sorry um if she is going to return home soon thank you all right let's see <clears throat> All right, so so we're the person that had this. I'm definitely feeling um, more of not anytime soon. Um, hello, Joanne. So for anyone popping on, most likely I'm not going to get to you today. I am in the middle of a reading right now, but because my daughter's going to be home in a few moments. So so for this person regarding their partnership and is this person and their ex is going to return to them. So the feeling I have is not necessarily, at least not in the two, next two weeks, you know, that there is I feel like I'm feeling a lot of fear, like like they feel scared somehow. I don't know if it's scared of you or the power of the relationship or that they're not going to be accepted by you because of whatever they've done or but yeah there's this feeling of I'm also feeling like like when I drop into them like they feel really confined um, like almost like they're having a hard time moving so I see this image of like if a moth was wrapped in um, like silk like that they they feel stuck in some ways and to not necessarily take it personally, like whatever is preventing them from coming home or connecting with you because it's their own process of transformation. I'm guessing that the idea of the moth, so the image I see with them like in a cocoon almost or forming represents that they're going through a transformation in themselves. And sometimes when we have beloveds in our lives, if anyone can relate, that are going through deep transformations and may become very unavailable to us. It's important to just realize and honor that 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 level of distance sometimes is what they need. And it's not that, you know, it can hurt, but how can you continue to hold space for whatever they need in this level of um, shedding and transforming that's happening? Because, because sometimes, you know, this is my own, experience with with holding on to a partner when you know be, when I felt like I was the thing that was keeping them alive and in that dynamic I realized that I was like I it, because of that situation like I was enabling them to have their head just above water but really they needed to, that idea of like hitting rock bottom is like sometimes sometimes folks just need to hit rock bottom so that they can really bounce up and like clear that and have a new sense of life and vitality and and purpose but that can only really come if you get down to like the depths of the sorrow or the depths of the confusion or the depths of like really what's what's dark and lurky in there and and maybe like what they're trying to show you in this message is to just trust in their process and to not be rushing with them to not you know just giving them the spaciousness they need also energetically with love and compassion um for them to go through whatever this transformation is for them even if from the outside it looks like they're really confined um but that there is there is something happening that in the greater scheme of things like down 10 years down the line it's going to make complete sense <laughs> don't we all know that <laughs> all right so that was for you my dear and so the next question we have hello everyone popping on by the way um yeah to be quite honest i'm just gonna read who i think i have questions for so you're of course welcome to stay and enjoy the transmissions and you know they i feel like they do speak to us in different layers and there's teachings that are pretty universal 
Um, but if you are just waiting and you're not, I'm not gonna be able to get to you, then I wanna honor your time too. So the questions. <laughs> All right, so the questions that we have next is. And how is this gonna work is I'm gonna get as many questions in. My daughter's getting picked up in like 10 minutes, so I'll see what we can fit in. Emma, we got Emma Jane. Let's see, are you next? Oh, Emma, you're the <laughs> so well, actually, so Emma, first, you're after Terry, but you're actually um next after Terry. So I have room for two more questions. So you, my dear, have not been waiting in vain. I hope you've received some things in this journey. So yeah, the next questions that I have space for, and I apologize for anyone that's popped on and has been waiting. I hope you've been able to receive from these transmissions. Um, so the next ones I have is Terry Tucker and then and then Emma Jane, okay? So I think how I'm gonna do this next time, so if you pop on, I'll make an announcement too, is that, <laughs> Is I'm gonna get people to write their number when they when they pop on. But I'm all right, so enough talking. Let's get to this before my six-year-old comes running in. All right, so Terry Tucker, my dear. Hope you're still on because this is for you. All right, so so Miss Terry, are you on? By the way? Are you still popping on? Have you have you been around before I get into this? Terry, are you here? Because I'm thinking if you're not here, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. Just to honor the squeeze of time and then maybe get into the next maybe I'll be able to add it one more person. So Terry, my dear, I'm gonna count to five. Are you here? One, two. Tres, cuatro, cinco. All right, so I'm guessing you're not here. Laverne is here. Hello, Laverne. You might actually get on because, think... okay. So Magdalena, who's just, um, we don't have time to, we've got quite a list already and I only have time for two more readings. So I'm gonna, since I haven't heard from Terry, I'm actually gonna bring this one down and we're gonna get to somebody who is here. All right, so we got Emma, my dear. Look at all those kiddos. Hey, LeVan. All right, so we got Emma, and Emma is saying, hi, a chick. Will I be happy again, and is my ex the one for me? All right. Well, I want to say, yes, you will be happy again. Damn right, you better be. All right. <coughs> Actually, before I get on, I'm just going to post um, no more space. For anyone popping on. Okay, so Emma Jane. There are two areas in your life that need you to speak to them. And when we say speak to them, we say have a conversation with these parts of yourself that have felt abandoned, that have felt taken advantage of, 
that have felt misused by society's desires or expectations of you. Because somehow these qualities are running a cycle within your being, okay? And there has been reason for them in the past because they've been there to support you in addressing if you can actually support the needs of others, right? And so when we get into the idea of the needs of others, whether it's being a family person or, or a beloved or partner, a daughter, a relative, we see that there are parts of your anatomy, so things in your body. We're seeing something connected to your lymphatic system that is more of a physical place or repercussions of some of the grief and the stagnation in some areas of your life that you may have felt. And so to support that, this is connected to your question, but to support that, support the movement that needs to happen to bring life force back into your life, to bring joy back into your life, to bring excitement towards what's possible for you, we see getting your lymphatic system, so really having movement. <laughs> They're showing me like, like trampolines, like like something that not only is gonna is gonna bring up a lot of life energy, but it's gonna bring out that like inner child um, in you. Maybe even if you have kids near rad or you know bring kids into the picture. I don't know if you have a trampoline. It's very specific, but if it's possible, get a trampoline. <laughs> um, let's see. Because <clears throat> yeah, they're 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 really pointing that your your body is holding a lot of, your body's holding a lot right now that's, that needs to be shifted on a very physical way. So through like working with your lymphatic system, maybe doing like different lymph, lymph draining, maybe even the process of, okay, catch you next time, Penny Lee. Um, so maybe doing the process of like lymphatic draining. I don't know if there's ways of getting, but, but that your lymph system they're showing me is, is holding so much. And I feel like the lymph system on an energetic perspective represents like being able to flow right like it's a place of circulation and so perhaps what they're also getting at is like in some areas of your life there hasn't been like circulation you know there hasn't been that feeling of fluidity like things have been feeling rigid or stuck or stagnant and I know that grief can do that you know grief can be a very humbling and stilling substance in some ways like place to to find ourselves in so in order to shift the weight of that, shaking things up, okay? So shaking things up in your body. Um, I'm, like, I'm like seeing you just like, like shaking it out. Like there's a, there's a process that actually the primal world, so a lot of animals do when they've experienced some sort of like trauma or, you know, they've come into shock where they actually – um, hello, Lisa Marie Smith. Sorry, hun, we're we're at the end of it. Um, no, I won't have space for your question, but catch us next Wednesday. So, so in the process of shaking it out, okay, they go into nature and or the moment after something happens. I mean, how amazing it would it be if as as humans who experience trauma or shock, we could just stop everything and just shake it out of our body. And I feel like society has has really confined us to have these, these primal instincts to really release things so that they don't hold on with us. And, you know, because of societal programming and, and so I'm seeing like this image, like they're, they keep showing this image of like this deer going into the forest and also maybe working with the deer animal because, and why this is related to your ex is I feel like before, like before we can even get into the return of a relationship with the beloved, it's like, this needs to shift, okay? Like there needs to be this movement in you so that you can create space because you might find that once you have that energy available again, you might not be energetically even attracted in the same way to this partnership in the, in the way that it used to be. You know, it can come in different ways. But they're showing me yeah, this image of this deer and going into nature. If there's a way, like do you have a, a forest nearby? Oh, I think my family's here. So I'm to, but um yeah, this image of like going into nature and actually like having some space 
to like be wild and like shaking off, like really feeling like leaving what you don't want to take with you that you're ready to release, like in nature, like grounding it, like touching some trees, like really putting your hands in the dirt or in the desert. I don't know where you are. <laughs> um, and this, you know, this doesn't have, hasn't have to happen like right away, but definitely in the next like two months, they're saying two months, two to six months is like a really important time for you to like really shift things because a cycle is going to be returning in your life after that and you want to be prepared for it. So go to the forest or wherever nature is and just shake it off and really set the intention that you're shaking off any of this residual energy that's on your body from whatever experiences you've had and leaving it there. And so part of this ritual, and for anyone else that's listening, this is just something you can also do as a fun experiment to really shift things is, so you shake it off, you go wherever you're, shake it off in the forest, and then when you leave, okay, so in the process of leaving that glade or that field, or make sure that you don't look back. And that's really important. So so the psyche or the ego might wanna like look back at what's what it's taken off. And I want you to really know, like. Sometimes with this with this kind of work, you'd be surprised at what excuses the mind will create. Like, oh, did I forget something? Oh, I should double check. It's like, I mean, if you need someone to be there with you to like make sure they like, don't look back, um, you can do that. But just once you shake off, then turn it in the other direction and just go, go home. Don't look back. Okay. And that's some homework for you. So, and for anyone else that wants to explore that releasing process. So thank you all so much for popping on and being open to this work or being curious enough to explore. I hope that you were able to receive some teachings and that whatever has transpired, you know, believe it, leave it, re receive it. <laughs> Sorry, let me remember my quote. Believe it, receive it, leave it, or lend it. Okay, so if it's not for you, if something that's come up, if an answer's come up, you're welcome, my dear. If an answer's come up that doesn't sit with you, an aspect doesn't sit with you, like, please don't take it on. I don't want to impose anything that that you're not ready to hear or that isn't quite in alignment with your path um but i am highly accurate <laughs> so there we are so thank you so much and once again come pop in on a wednesday i'm going to be touring down the west coast on november 3rd and teaching and doing live ask the invisibles in ashland and near shasta um and also in Santa Cruz, Berkeley area, I'm still looking for a venue and I'm teaching a couple classes in Portland. So if you are anywhere along the journey, I'd love to see you in person at such a treat. And you can see that on my website, which is deepsouljourneys.com. So thank you all so much. And if you do feel called to actually work with me privately, um, I do do Ask the Invisibles um, private sessions. And there's a by donation half an hour session or an hourly rate. So and in half an hour, we can get in like usually like two to three solid questions unless the answers are really long in substance. All right. I hear the door. My daughter's here. I'm going to go make her some food. So blessings to you all. Aloha.